My name is Jack Leach. I was a caretaker at Oswin Avenue School between 1972 and 1989. I first became a caretaker, deputy caretaker at Oswin Avenue in 1969. Uh, I was there for six months and I took over the school uh, as caretaker and after three and a half years I went back up to Oswin Avenue to be the caretaker. Uh, the reason I came back, uh, the caretaker, Mr Dick Tanner, had died and the, the school, uh, the job was vacant. The first experience I had of, uh, of caretaking was uh, when my sister became caretaker of the Methodist Church at Great Alton. Uh, and so I used to help out with her. Uh, and I used to do the boilers uh, because I didn't want to go in up early morning on her own up the village uh, so I did them for her, you see. Uh, during my interview, uh, there was Mr. Nadine, the headmaster, and the director of caretakers out of the office. Uh, and a few years later, uh, one of the uh, uh, directors, the assistant director, was uh, Alan Blessed. The, uh, the brother of Brian Blessed, the actor. Uh, the job entailed uh, at Oswin of uh, supervising cleaners. Uh, I had a certain amount of uh, rooms to, uh, to do myself. And also uh, it was keeping the boilers going, which uh, uh, I had four boilers uh, keep going during winter uh, and they took some cleaning out uh, at the weekend when you were when they were down uh, because the, of the soot um, and when I went home I was it, it was just as if I'd been down the pit <laughs> that black I used to wear a mask over my nose mm. and my mouth, you know, for uh, for the soot. Mm. The boilers, uh, I had four boilers, um, and they, uh, there was three at the back of the school, which uh, used to cover the biggest part at the back, uh, and then there was one at the front, and that, uh, used to look after the front of the school. Every weekend on a Saturday morning, they all had to be cleaned out. The, uh, um, the chimney at the back had to be cleaned out full of soot. Every weekend on a Saturday morning, they all had to be cleaned out. The, uh, um, the chimney at the back had to be cleaned out full of soot. Uh, and I'm afraid when I got home, <laughs> my wife thought I'd been down the pit. <laughs> uh, Mr. Nadine was, uh, was a fair man. Uh, he was straight to a point. But uh, I... Uh, I got on with him quite well. Uh, I thought at first it was it was a bit brusque, but uh, I think it was just um, you know nothing about it. It was a big man, uh, and I think the size of him uh, used to frighten the kids. You know if he. If I saw him doing something and he shouted, uh, then, then, then we were there. I got on him quite well with him. You know, at a time or two, he, uh, he might have been a little bit 
uh, I'm afraid uh, I stick to my guns. Um, I'm not easily intimidated because uh, the one occasion when he uh, came to me and he said, why does the cleaner in the gym always clean on the morning? I said, well, she can't get in at night. Why not? I said, well, because your staff's always in playing badminton and they don't go home until it's, it's time for us to go home. Well, I said, I'd like it cleaning at night. I said, well, I'm afraid, Mr. Nadine, uh, if you don't tell your staff to uh, go home, uh, it's going to have to be morning. Uh, and he, he agreed, I suppose, but uh, it still carried on. They still, they still wanted to play badminton, which I suppose um, it's there and uh, you've just got to work around things, haven't you? In the school, in, in the middle, we had a, a, a square quad with our garden. And down both sides was a corridor looking onto the uh, onto the quad, uh, and the the roof of the corridors were all glass. Uh, well, they decided to take them off and put a solid roof on. The the floors were, they were beautiful floors. They were they were parquet uh, floors of wood. Uh, but when they changed them, they uh, they put some plastic tiles down. But they weren't as good as what the parquet floors. The parquet floors always looked nice when they were polished. We used wax polish, and we used to uh, have a mop uh, and put some. Uh, Wax, floor, uh, wax on the floor and spread it out with a mop and wait till it dried mm. and then we had a, a buffer and it, uh, we used to buff it up and they looked very nice but after the kids used to slide <laughs> down the corridors uh, if nobody were watching and used to leave long black marks and there was a devil to uh, to clean up, but the entrance was always left parquet floor, and I was proud of that floor. It looked beautiful. When you went in, uh, any visitors, they saw that that entrance. It, it was it was very very nice, and then they decided to do away with wax polish, and they gave us some. It was like a like milk, but that weren't as good as the wax. We used to have difficulty in in cleaning the floors, you know, but they had to be done. They they didn't uh, they didn't see uh, the amount of work that we did. Uh, they just saw that when they came in, everything was nice and clean. Mister Ned in the headmaster. Uh, he used to come in uh, during the holidays and uh, he used to come and pop down and see us and he, he used to say we were doing a good job. Uh, it was always very pleasant. I started off with 22 cleaners. Gradually we dropped one or two off. They, uh, they, they decided uh, you know, that uh, there were too many. But uh, each each cleaner had their own patch to do and so uh, they kept it clean uh, the clean windows when they could do them uh, after they, they, they swept up and wiped all the tables and, and desks and, and whatever uh, but when it came to holiday time we all worked during the school holidays and <laughs> you couldn't get down the corridors because all the desks and chairs were taken out of the classrooms, put on the corridors. Uh, the walls were washed. Uh, and all the desks and chairs scrubbed. 
the, cl the floors were polished, and then everything were put back. It was a big job uh, during the school holidays because there were big classrooms, and to wash the walls, uh, it wasn't uh, it wasn't an easy job. I had an, I had a, a room. It was quite a big room. Um, all down one side was cupboards, which uh, I, I kept uh, little stock. And then there was a big table, and oh, quite a few chairs around it. Well, I had a one of the gentlemen's chairs, the with the spindles and the the oval back, and I had a teacher's desk. The ones where you lifted the, the lid up when I did my work. And uh, when the cleaners came to school, they they always come before the kids went home. And so they used to come into my room and, and sit round this table and, and have a little chat until the, the kids had gone. The ones that had, didn't have anywhere to put the buckets and the mops. They used to put them in a corner in, in my room. I had a phone on the wall and I, I didn't know whether it worked or not. And I was I was sat in my chair and just been doing something and uh, all of a sudden the, this phone went and I thought, oh dear, I've not heard that before. So I, I answered it and I, I said, home for fallen women. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, the, it was the secretary ringing me down. And she went, ah! <laughs> and we, we had a good laugh. Uh, and Mrs. Wilson, she was uh, she was school secretary, and she was nice, uh, a nice quiet, quiet person. We had a school bus. We got a school bus, and uh, so uh, I said to her, I said to my ladies, uh, I wonder if Mr. Nadian will let us have the school bus for a trip out. So uh, I said, I'll ask him. So I went to Mr. Nadin and I said, uh, Mr. Nadin, I said, we've got a school bus. I said, do you think it would be possible for us to uh, have a, a, a day out with the bus? And they said, well, I don't see why not. They said, um, you're part of the school as long as you can get somebody to drive it. Well, there were only certain ones that uh, that drove the school bus. When I went to uh, Roy Jenkins, I said, Roy, I said, uh, how are you fixed? I said, Mr. Nadin said we can borrow the school bus if we can get a driver. So I said, will you? Of course I will, Jack, I said. You know, I'd be pleased. So uh, we had uh, one or two trips out. Uh, we had a good day, and then we had a collection, and uh, we gave it to Roy, and he covered uh, his expenses and what have you, a little, little bit for himself, uh, and everybody were were pleased. <laughs> Gave the magic flute, and I thought it was good. Well, my brother was uh, in with Yorkshire Television. I uh, I rang him. And I asked him if he'd come see it. Can do doing what they call them rehearsals. He came over, 
when he went back and said they'd got that many uh, that they they couldn't put them all in. I'd had words with one, uh, I don't know where they done some feathering back or, or set some feathering. So uh, I had words with him. And uh, and he was leaving, I don't know where they were going. And he, uh, he, came, he came to me, he said, uh, we're having a bit of a do, Jack, in staff room. Uh, after kids have gone home. So I said, uh, you'll come in and have a drink with us, won't you? So, uh, and then he, he thanked me for all I've done, kind of, and uh, that I never saw him again. When you mentioned um, Dunning, um, I, was, I was down at uh, King Edward, my middle lad, he came home and he said uh, he got a back cold and so uh, next morning his mum said well I'll write a note he said well it's cross country and he, he was really he got this really back cold so she said I'll write a note to Mr Dunn and uh, ask him if he'll give you some work in, in school when they did cross country they used to take the football gear you see so of course Michael goes to school at morning and come home at dinner time oh if you would have seen him he was sludged up to eyes his his shoes were sodden and his mother said what have you been doing Michael he said oh he said Mr Dunn said Meaning as you're not doing cross country, you can go and mark the thing out. And of course, it was it was outside of the river and mm -hmm. uh, it was all muddy. So mm -hmm. I said to him, uh, "I'll write a note to Mister Dunning." He said, um, "Not your mum." So I wrote this note telling him off, <laughs> and. I said, hey, take this to Mr. Dunning. I'm not. I said, now you take it to him. He said, well, if I do, I shall run. <laughs> now, I don't know whether he did. Uh, I can't be sure. But the first man that I saw when I went oh, back up to Oswin to start work was Mr. Dunning walking up the corridor. <laughs> And he said, hello, Mr. Leach, are you, are you all right? <laughs> it was, there were happy times. I enjoyed, I, I enjoyed me, uh, Mr. Osborne. And then, of course, things got uh, different. They, uh, they decided that uh, the cleaners were going to be privatised. We wouldn't have any uh, anything to do uh, with the cleaners. We just had our own spot to clean. And when, uh, they said where there were two caretakers, uh, in a junior school, which we now we were back to junior school, they were going to take one away. I was I was nearly sixty four, uh, and my assistant, he uh, was twenty years younger. So I said, uh, "Well, Mister Woods, I said, uh, what's the what's the point in getting rid of, of the young man, and keeping the old one on? I think I've." I, I won't mind taking redundancy. So I said, well, 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 we'll have to see. It was the Monday morning that uh, they were taking over the, the week after. And Mr. Woods came to me and he said, uh, oh, you're leaving on Friday. So I said, it was, <laughs> it was a shock, kind of. But uh, I left on Friday. It was, the last day of March, my assistant took over 
and he was there until oh, well a few years he left I don't know whether he left before the, the school were closed or not but they, they closed the school and they knocked it down and it was a strong school and all the timbers was as good as they were when they were put in because I'd been up to uh, the other school, uh, Bolby Car, and I didn't think it was anything, uh, anything like uh, Bolby High School. If you would like to know more about the Aussie Through the Ages project, then please email me at Tony Armstrong 1959 at Outlook.com. Thank you.